Hello. Um, I cannot wait until the 19th. Um, when my disability comes through and I can get a cover for my light and a <clears throat> microphone. Until then, I'll have to make do. So, as you can see, I'm wearing a hat. This is a green witch's hat. It's, got, it's really cute. Really cute. Um, this hat cost me a pretty penny. It's my fancy hat. I have another one um, that I actually prefer. And it's a little more plain. Why do I have? I thought it were the fancy one for you guys. Why do I have witches hats? Well, um. This video is about um, the world or worlds. There are different worlds of types of fantasy. And I was wondering if there was, if anyone felt that adults that are still into fantasy, um, is there um does it have anything to do with a psychiatric disorder they have that it car carried on into adulthood or percentage of people that it um attracts and why um, in my observation over time through being in certain kind of movies, um, playing magic cards, gathering, um, D and D, watching Star Trek, Next Generation, um, Xena, um, and then uh, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, stuff like that. Um, I know that for myself, um, it, I know that for myself, it was, it has to do with that it, that I'm still attracted to it as a, uh, as an escape because this world we live in um, can be even every day living can be overwhelming and and what I mean by that besides um, the stress of a psychiatric disorder for me, yeah, um, sensory, um, the, the, the sights and sounds and smells of the present make me uncomfortable. And when I am immersed in uh, some sort of fantasy, I can completely cut out the real stuff, the now stuff, the present stuff, and put myself into 
the fantasy and um, I love my water somewhere. I always have to have water. Okay, so um, I think for me it started when I was 11. Um, I read a book. Um, not necessarily in the fantasy category as you would think it is now, but it's had the same effect. I read a book called um, Little Women, and I became completely obsessed with it. And um, I did have some neighborhood friends, and we would take turns picking what to play. And every time it was my turn, I would make us play that. Or sometimes we would do stuff and I would just play it in my head. And I could, um, I could completely eliminate what was going, the, the present time and go there in the fantasy. And and I know that some psychiatric disorders do allow a person to have um, a high level of creativity and intensity. Um, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but that's been the way it's been all my life since then. Um, I read books and when I read books, I am in it. Like, um, but I always have a favorite. And so, um, in the 90s, I met somebody and was engaged, and he played Dungeons and Dragons and collected, no, I had a friend um, in my as teen years that collected comic books, and so I got into that for a little bit, and I still have my favorite ones, female hero, like, um, ninja type um female grundle and whisper and some catwoman um so and so i was into that for a while um and then then when i met this guy I started playing D&D &D with them and my favorite activity and I would, they would even give me, people would even give me orders, like, not give me orders, like boss me around, like, a, ask me to paint the figurines because I would get out like this magnifying glass on a thingy and um, I have like two bristles on a brush and very intricate very focused. I love doing that. And, um, and I would play with them. Um, and then, um, uh, I never, we broke up. Um, but also during that time, I watched Xena, Warrior Princess, and I'm still completely in love with that series. I have it all on DVD. Um, I like Hercules too, um, but Dina, um, and I just like the campiness, the, um, it's funny. And at the same time, there is a storyline. So 
Um, and I also like uh, Star Trek Next Generation. <laughs> I'm not a old school one. Um, Next Generation, Voyager, a little bit of Deep Space Nine. Um, and, um, let's see, and then I moved on to, uh, I think, from there, the X-Files, that was my next obsession, um, and then Harry Potter came along. And I have been utterly and completely obsessed since then. And that was in my 30s. And, um, and I still, I just will finish the last book and pick up the first one um, and watch the movies. And then Game of Thrones, but that was a little more, that's a little more mainstream and adult content, so, um, it's not unusual for an adult to be obsessed with Game of Thrones, but I do hear a lot of flack about adults being into And, um, and so the hats, I, I go to the Renaissance Festival every year and I can, it's like a vacation for me every year and I save up all my money all year so I can spend it there and whatever I want. And see, I can, when I go, I can... With surgical precision, cut out the tourists and the loud people there just getting drunk and they aren't dressed or anything, they aren't dressed up or anything. I can cut them out and see only the little houses with the things, the things that you can look at and purchase and the other adults that are dressed up because they enjoy it. Um, and the characters that um, really seem to enjoy the role that they're playing. Um, there's nothing worse than a uh, bum renaissance festival. Um, and these people know me and my dog they by name I go every year get a season pass go every weekend um, take my dog and um And I usually go alone with my dog, and I actually prefer it that way because when I have another person with me and they're not into it to the extent that I am, I it kind of spoils it for me. I the, where the creativity, I, it's a way for me to. Um, release that creativity that many of us with bipolar disorder have. It's almost like a building up and you have to do something to release it. Um, and well before the festival, if I'm going to make a new costume, it's, I plan it well before and I don't just 
buy something or throw something together, I go all out. Um, like, now, I did buy the hats. Um, I like this hat because this one comes off and you can put, you can buy different ones to put on. Um, and I have a green cloak and a black outfit that I wear with it. That's not really my personality, but just I sometimes want to be something different. I usually wear the brown one. I call the brown one the humble witch um, because where's the earth tones um, and you know um, little kids like the little kids think I'm a real witch not like Halloween witch like maybe Harry Potter witch and um, and Anytime I get new glasses, I have to go through. It takes me so long, and I get so frustrated. Um, I was very frustrated this year because I had had these awesome gold-rimmed, sort of rounded. It was really just gold here, and they looked awesome with all of my outfits. And I have a very narrow, my eyes are close together my head's narrow so I went to wear children's frames and you know and like these days what used to be everybody's glasses were like rectangles right there and they were way too wide and they just were not witch like <laughs> and um I oh I get so mad and um and now they're like just really big and I'm going, what's going on? And I had to find these were the best I could get because I needed new bifocals and they're children's and they're slightly circular. It was the best I could get. Um, other hat, the green one was like, this one feels more comfortable to me, more like myself. Um, it looks really good when the whole outfit is on. Um, and, um, when I, I have a broom, I don't buy a broom. I make a broom. And it's a whole outfit. I'm mixing, matching this. So the broom that goes to this hat is right here. I'm just going to point out that it's dark and shiny because this was a stick I found. I'm such a weirdo. See, that is what I'm going to talk about. Am I a weirdo? Is there something wrong with me that I do this? I needed a stick for a new broom to go with my hat. Searched and searched and searched forever for a new broom stick. Finally found this one. It, it will do. And so, cleaned it up, sanded it, cut off anything that needed to cut it off. Um, with a Dremel saw. Um, I didn't really sand it much except where I cut with the saw. And then I stained it with a really dark stain and um, put some, uh, sprayed it. 
uh, with some shiny stuff, some really shiny. And then I found these, these, or <laughs> these here at Walmart in the area, arts and crafts area. And they are secured on. I have another room that goes with the brown hat, but it's kind of in a place that's high up to get. And they all might have a nice snug one, older. Now, I did that, and everybody thought it was pretty cool. Um, because I kept losing my wands. Oh, there's nothing worse than losing a wand you just bought or your favorite wand that won't get destroyed by dogs. Okay, I... Uh, I have another wand with the other broom, but like I said, it's difficult to get out. I have this cute little wand. I have, I love this one, but it's a little unfinished. It needs to, something needs to happen with the end, because obviously it was just on a lathe. I think I would love to have a lathe to make ones. I tried to whittle one and it's, it's ginormous. Um, I need to do something with it. I've been sanding it. But I need to make it special. Now, I think it was last year they had a Game of Thrones thing. And um, I went as the Waif, and if you don't know what the Waif is from Game of Thrones, she is the one that is with um, Arya in The Faceless Men, and that eats her with the staff, and they fight with the staff, so I use her. And this is the staff now. I couldn't find a stick the right size that was straight, so it's crooked. As the ends like they do in the show and um, made the outfit. You know, I don't like to go out and buy an outfit. My mom makes my clothes and she made the dress for the wave. So, anyway. So, um, now you know what it is, but I'm really into it. I've got Harry Potter. Sorry. And everything in anything is because, um, Um, because it's like taking a vacation, like I said, I can, um, just completely leave the here and now and go somewhere in my imagination. And it also is a way of releasing that creativity. Um... I'm not embarrassed to mention to people, yeah, I'm into Harry Potter, but I, I am hesitant um, to say how much <laughs> um, I am. So, um, You know, I would have to be 
with someone really close and even then I would probably be a little embarrassed. Um, and I do, oh, I, I, I play one game on Switch Diablo. I played it in the 90s on the computer and liked it. Um, I like the Switch one too. And I'm trying to play Witcher and, um, um, I forgot the name of it. Very similar. Um, I'm having trouble figuring out the controller. Uh, so, uh, my question to you is, do you, um, have an affinity for some sort of fantasy? It could be like me, like magic stuff. It could be sci-fi or anime, like or like into vampires or something. Um, what kind of activities related to that do you do? Video games, card games, like, you know, like magic, D and do you do any live games? And there's a name for them in the, when I went to a convention, they had a vampire one where they actually played, the role played it live, like, and there's a name for that, and I can't remember what it is. Do you ever go to conventions like Comic Con or you know Magic, just in general? Conventions or festivals like me. Um, and how deep are you into this? Your world of fantasy that you prefer and um do you think you spend too much time there do you um think there's anything wrong with being an adult into those into the those topics those worlds are you embarrassed to tell people are you do you hide it um do you have friends that are into it too and you do things and um the big question is that i'm asking is do you think that your psychiatric condition makes you more prone to be immersed in fantasy of some kind? As I personally think mine does in two, I can think of two ways right now. Like I said, it's like a vacation, um, like a mental vacation um, while I'm at the festival, while I'm getting something, I'm working on the costume. If I'm gonna have a new one that year. Um, and anticipating how I'm going to do it this year. Um, you know, it's like one year 
I plotted exactly what route to take to make sure I went through every single little lane and hit every store. And then the next year I decided I was just going to not follow the map and just wander, <laughs> you know. So, um, it's like escaping all my concerns and worries <clears throat> from right now. And um, the second thing is the social anxiety that I have when I go and I'm dressed up. I don't, I'm not me anymore, <laughs> you know, so I don't feel as self-conscious as I do. Like right now, if I were to go to the grocery store, I feel very self-conscious. Dress up in a witch costume outfit at the Renaissance Festival. I feel like I fit in. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Um, and, um, and it's easier for me to talk to people like the merchants and stuff. Um, I feel anxiety, but it's easier for me to overcome it. Um, and it's a relief to be able to look at things like hats um, and not have someone make a comment, a nasty comment about uh, dressing up. And I see I feel accepted because I see other adults dressed up. Um, and the bipolar part, like I said, the creativity. Um, and uh, but I just wondered what percentage of, of adults that are still into fantasy have have a psychiatric disorder and are they related in any way? Why that person continues to be into fantasy when they're an adult? Or is it just coincidence and it's just the same? And there's some people are, some people aren't, and it's no different. So that's what I was wondering what you all thought. Um, um, I think there's probably a good amount of people that have some issues and, and if they really like to escape and get out of their own heads and the world as it is now. But, um, I think there's some normal, normal people also, but maybe they don't get quite as immersed as we do. Um, obsessed. <laughs> so that's that's my thoughts. So I would like to hear you. All.